So how do you become an optometrist in the United States? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you a step-by-step -step process on exactly what you need to know to become an optometrist. And make sure you watch until the end where I share with you a couple tips on how to best approach your optometric journey. Hey guys, my name is Dr. Ryan Court, and this is Ryan Reflects. On this channel, I share with you actionable personal development content, as well as my thoughts on trending topics and common life experiences. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, throughout any point in the video, make sure you check out the notes and links in the description below. Step one, discover if you really want to be an optometrist or not. You've got to do your research on the front end. What do I mean by that? Work in an optometry practice. See what it's like from a day-to-day -day operational aspect of being an optometrist, being a part of an eye care team. Shadow an optometrist if you can't get a job in a practice. Be a fly on the wall and, and see if you can learn more through that process. And of course, do your research. If you're watching this video, you're already doing a research on the front end, but there are a ton of awesome resources that I'll link to in the description below for you to further evaluate and investigate this profession and make sure it's the right fit for you. Next, you have to make sure that you take the right prerequisite courses for the school that you want to go to. Kind of a loaded step, right? Because there are a number of courses that are required across all schools, pretty much your general science courses, biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, anatomy, physiology, almost every school is gonna want those courses, but every school's criteria is just a little bit different. And in fact, I'll link to a website in the description below that'll kind of walk you through each school's descriptions, because again, you wanna make sure that you're following these to a T. The easiest way to approach this is go ahead and get an undergraduate degree in biological sciences with a pre-med or pre-optometry tracking, and you'll hit the vast majority of those courses. But I know a lot of people that went and got a business degree or a philosophy degree or you know communications degree and got all their courses still and were able to kind of double down in a degree that was not just basic science, but also go ahead and hit all those prereq courses. During that time, you're gonna to have to take the OAT, which is the optometry admissions test. You can view this test as kind of like the MCAT for medical school or the DAT for dental school. In fact, the DAT and the OAT are very similar. The OAT consists of four tests on the following, survey of natural sciences, physics, reading and comprehension, and quantitative reasoning. What's really nice, the OAT is a computerized test. You'll take it from metric testing centers. You can take it year round. You can retake it if you find that you don't score exactly where you need to be. It's scored between a 200 to 400 scale. And so obviously the higher the score, the better off you did. But there's lots of opportunity to retake the test if you, at first you don't succeed. Next, you're gonna to wanna to research optometry schools and apply. There are 23 schools and colleges of optometry across the United States. Some really fantastic options for you to consider. The great thing about applying to optometry school now is there's one website where you can do it all. It's the Optometry Centralized Application Service. And I'm gonna go ahead and link to that in the description below, but your application is the same for every optometry school, all 23 in the United States. And I got news for you, optometry school, well, it's not free also not cheap. You are going to want to look into financial aid to go to optometry school. Most people, if not the vast majority of people that become an optometrist, go ahead and get financial aid. Of course, there are grants and scholarships that are available, so look into those as well. I'll link to some in the description below that are options, but you're going to want to think about what is this going to cost me? What is my return on investment? How am I going to go ahead and pay this back? I actually did a video on the optometry student loan debt and how to go about tackling that, minimizing your student loan debt, which I'll link to right above here. But these are things to consider because again, it's not a cheap endeavor. So once you get into optometry school and you understand what your financial aid looks like, and you're gonna go ahead and, and you're gonna select one school to go to, and you're gonna go there and you're gonna have an incredible experience, four amazing years of your life. You're gonna build lifelong friendships. You're gonna learn more than you ever thought about the human eye and visual system, as well as the human body and how it all interconnects. Your fourth year of optometry school will be fully clinical and you're gonna go and you're gonna learn everything from primary eye care and contact lenses and, and eye disease. And you know you can work in a VA setting, you can work in a private practice setting, an ophthalmology practice setting. You'll learn about vision therapy, pediatrics, and working with geriatric patients, low vision, all sorts of awesome stuff. During optometry school, you're gonna to have to take and pass all three parts of the National Board of Examiners in Optometry, otherwise known as the NBEO. It's the national board than the regulatory body of 
optometry in the United States. Got to pass all three sections. A lot of people go ahead and utilize what's called KMK, an awesome resource to study and prepare for each board. Of course, optometry school in general prepares you very well. And guess what? If you don't pass the first time, take it again. If you don't pass a second time, take it again. I know a number of people that have failed part one, two, or three a few times and are still now practicing today. Next, I recommend that you consider an optometric residency. This is an optional step. It's not required because during your fourth year of optometry school, you gain all the clinical knowledge and experience required to go out and start practicing as an optometrist. But I can tell you, I did an optometric residency. I look back on that experience. It was invaluable. It was awesome. I made lifelong friendships, a lot of connections, and gained a lot of awesome experience in a high volume ocular disease setting. So if you want to specialize in a certain area of optometry, you want to keep doors open to, to practice in the VA or in academia or go into industry, it's a great idea to do a residency. It's an additional year, but it's highly, highly, highly valuable. It's something to consider. If you don't go this route, of course, you're going to be a fantastic optometrist. You'll gain that experience and know-how over time, but it's an optional step and one that I recommend you consider. So you've completed optometry school. You've passed all three parts of national boards. Kudos to you, all very challenging steps. What do you do next? Well, you gotta go back and figure out where you wanna practice and you need to get licensed in that state to practice optometry. Some states have a lot more steps in that process than others. It's easier to do so in some states than others. And something that I highly, highly recommend you look into. And if you already know, hey, now I wanna go back to my home state and practice, we'll look into that now. My final thoughts on how to become an optometrist and really recapping this video enjoy the process because it is a process yeah i went through it in just a number of steps in a you know a short video here but it's a process because it goes by very quick and before you know you'll be sitting in my shoes almost 10 years out practicing and looking back and being like wow why did i worry so much and it goes by in the blink of an eye and you'll look back at all that hard work and you will be so proud of yourself but you also think about well maybe i should have been more present or really enjoyed and embraced certain moments get involved, get to know others in the profession. You know, practicing optometrists out here, I'm always happy to connect. People that work in industry, learn more about the profession during your time in optometry school because it goes by so very quick. And I will tell you that if you get involved, you'll be very happy that you do because it opens up so many incredible doors for you. But this is a wonderful profession. I highly recommend that if you have any questions, reach out, let me know, I'm happy to answer them. And I hope to see you before you know it sitting right next to me in a continuing education lecture as my colleague. My question of the video, do you want to become an optometrist? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below and stay tuned for my next video where we can reflect and grow stronger together.